Well, we've already messed up the geography of the Dalmatian coast so we could follow the rough order of our trip, but now I'm going to mess up the order of our trip because of the geography and because I cannot be stopped or reasoned with. This is VAR, and while I'm modestly confident in dropping the H in pronouncing that, I'm never confident about anything in the Croat language, so don't hate. And once again, despite the fact that the whole island is called VAR, we are just focusing on the town of VAR because of the time constraints of our trip. Yes, VAR is a big place. In fact, it's even bigger than Korchula. The mountains are suitably high that it tricked me into thinking I was looking at the mainland all this time, and it's long too. On a different day, when I was traveling south out of Split, it was nearly two hours before we were finally level with the southern tip. Uh, speaking of which, whereas Korchula is just under a three-hour ferry from Split, you can be in VAR in just under an hour, and this means we decided to do it in a day. So we booked the ferry in advance, and after a boiling week, even by Croatian standards, we'd been promised a day of thunderstorms. Yeah, they were conspicuously absent when we set off. Okay, well, fairly uneventful trip over. You pass by the island of Brach on your way, and then as you round the corner of the bay, the town definitely makes quite the first impression. The rolling lines of palm trees, the elegant spires, and of course, towering over all of it, the Venetian fort. Now, we didn't have very long to check it all out, so after scampering off the boat, we made for the square and promptly hid in the shade because it was already scorching hot. At the far end is the Cathedral of St. Stephen. Not open when we were there, but overall, the island has done a good job of preserving the character of the square. It's very beautiful, but we had to make every minute count, so after grabbing drinks, we made straight for the fort. Uh, heading up the staircase, this is not an inconsiderable climb, so you better be ready. The narrow streets that lead up are very beautiful, and the defences of VAR stretch beyond the fort, so you'll reach the walls that run down the hill first. There's also quite a selection of cacti, as well as the lush views over the port. So VAR was already very exhilarating. Even at the time, I was already making mental comparisons to Korchula. I mean, it's kind of unavoidable considering their similarities, but we'll get to those at the end. Eventually, we got level with the entrance to the fort, low angle flag shot. Explored the fort, which was surprisingly empty of people, maybe because we went there in the heat of the day. I mean, yeah, it's a neatly put together example of an artillery fort. I can't tell exactly to what degree it's been restored. Um, amusingly, if the steps up didn't make you sweat every gallon of fluid out of your body, there's a Napoleonic fort pitched about twice as high up on a mountain in the distance, waving a scarlet rag like, yoo-hoo! Unsurprisingly, we made the calculation that we would not have the time or energy to make it up there inside of our day trip. Okay, so rather than expanding on the history of this, we are so close to kicking off our series on the Venetian Republic, we'll have ample time to do a much better job of it then, so expect that very soon. But the fort is great, and while it's quite the looker from the outside, I'd say you'd be stretching it to stay inside more than about an hour. There's a nice small exhibit on some of the Roman artifacts that were found in nearby dives, and a nice little cafe as well. The views are, of course, what really makes it. In fact, let's have a supercut. So, it's nearly unfathomable that you'd come to VAR and not see this. I mean, sure, the slope up is quite something, but just get over yourself and do it. It'll be worth it. We wound down through the town, this time through the upper gate in the city walls. Uh, had we had a full 24 hours end-to-end -to, -end to spend here, there were lots of places I would have loved to have lingered a bit, but we had to keep it moving along. Uh, spent a bit more time in the square. I wasn't quite as sharp on it at the time, but VAR has a lot of Venetian Gothic splashed around. Uh, we hadn't actually been to Venice at this point, but seeing it back now, it's quite striking just how much of it there is scattered around the town. We briefly stepped into the Venetian Arsenale, which has been transformed into a theatre. But I mean, not really tons to get excited about. I mean, it's, it's a theatre. It looks good for a Jane Austen cosplay shoot, but not a huge amount to see otherwise. Quick espresso here, which was, yeah, fine. Wandered around the water's edge a bit, past the small beach-ish area that people were using for a dip. The tower of the Franciscan Monastery was beckoning. I don't think it's one you can climb, mind, so we just saw a bit at the church. Uh, looped back and more espresso. 
I wandered around the other side of the port to another different monastery. Now, this is the Veneranda, which was not open at the time, though nowadays it's somewhere between a club slash outdoor cinema. Uh, rather comically, it has these defensive walls, but I'm pretty sure you could just, like, run up them. Yeah, you ever remember doing that as a kid? If there was, like, a slightly sloping wall at, like, uh, I don't know, like a leisure center or something, you could just try running up it and try and touch the top. Well, yeah, these walls aren't much higher than a human person, so I'm not sure what they're really going to defend you from. Goats, possibly, if they've become particularly hostile. You can see it was getting a lot cloudier and grey, uh, looking somewhat more threatening. We had a quick peek at some of the ruins of St Mark's Church uh, from the outside, also closed. Uh, by the way, if you're not keeping up with this series and you hadn't guessed from the number of it was closed in this video. It was indeed during the height of the Plague Tron 9000. Still, um, this is one of the more striking spires in the town. Uh, nice to get up a bit higher and get eye level with it. Well, with the weather looking progressively more ominous, we took a seat for a drink and then, yeah, finally the heavens opened, forcing everyone to rush inside. You know, while in England, unpleasant weather is practically our USP, as the recent coronation proved, there's something rather unusual at seeing a place that is normally consistently hot and sunny get absolutely lashed with rain. I didn't get this on video, but there were some people on a large yacht who, rather than retreating indoors, just turned up the electro house and danced in the rain, much to the amusement of everyone watching huddled from under the canopies of the restaurants. I mean, made a certain kind of sense, to be honest. Anyway, before long, it was time to run to the ferry with a jumper over your head and then, yeah, ferry back. Uh, the storm was quite short-lived and by the time we were back in split it pretty much stopped so to get ahead of the most obvious criticism yes there is a lot more on the island of var than just the town of var i mentioned this last time the town of Korchula is something of a standout on the island of Korchula, and even the other modest sized town vela luca can't really compete i will say on var the town of Starigrad also looks pretty promising it's not Quite as impressive as Var with all the fortifications, but had we had longer, would have very happily spent the day there. There's also the small town of Verbosca, which looks quite nice for an afternoon. Okay, so yes, bonus round. Now we've seen both, a bit of a top trumps between Korchula and Var. So, distance from Split, which is one of the main points of departure. Var is just under an hour from Split, whereas Korchula is just under three. Um, not sure why, but these ferries are actually pretty close in cost, so yeah, not much in it. As far as Korchula is concerned, there is an alternative where you cross from the Pelgesek Peninsula. Now, while the boat portion of that is much shorter, the Pelgesek Peninsula is pretty long and out of the way. So by the time you've got to the end there, you've probably extended at least the same amount of time that you would have if you'd left from Split. Uh, but if your start point is Dubrovnik, I guess that would make more sense than going all the way north to Split, only to retrace the distance south on the ferry. Uh, similarly, there appears to be a shorter crossing from the mainland to get physically onto the island of Var, but you're still at least an hour and a half drive from the main town of Var. So in both cases, almost no time has been saved. Uh, Historicalness? Uh, this one is very close. Croatia has done very well to preserve its historic towns right up to the present day, and there's scarcely a single building that sticks out to break the immersion in either of the old towns. So that one's a draw. Okay, so instead, new category. How excited would my seven-year-old self be at either? Well, Korchler has the more impressive overall form. I can't think of another town quite like it. Var does come a very close second with fortifications. I think the extra wall's bumping up the score a bit. I think the fact that it has a more full-on fort makes a difference, and it has the prison. I mean, it's practically a Lego set. This is gonna be close. Serenity, okay, Korchler takes this one. It's more chill harder to get to, somewhat fewer people, but definitely not dead. You're not going to have the place to yourself, but up until mid-afternoon, it was pretty quiet in the old town. Var edges ahead in doing the whole tropical island thing, I don't really have a category for that, but Korchler has the better view to the horizon for sunset, at least. Ah, uh, buildings you can poke your head in. That's close to a draw, but I think Var edges ahead just slightly down to size. Oh, one big-ish difference. Var is getting much more of a rep as a party town. Now, as we were there in daytime, not a lot of evidence of that other than these signs promising pretty big fines for dress code or public drinking. Don't think that's as much of a thing in Korchlet, but I will say, didn't see anything in Var to suggest it was anything other than tidy, 
clean and very pretty. So if there are people being antisocial at night, it was nowhere in evidence in the daytime. So which should you pick of the two? Well, that's clearly a false dichotomy. Go see both. But due to distance, I think it's probably more likely if time was tight, you'd end up going to VAR. Um, and to be honest, that makes Korchler a bit more of a rare Pokemon, so I think you'd actually appreciate Korchler more, especially because of the effort you'll have to put in. So there's your largely unhelpful, formatted for YouTube comparison segment. You are welcome. Okay, next episode we'll be seeing Split. I realise this one was a bit of a shorter one, but next time we've got a lot to cover, not just because there's a huge amount packed into Split, but because of the outlying towns nearby as well. I'm really enjoying putting all these into the Balkans playlist. Lots to check out in there, so definitely give that a look. As well as the preceding Croatia episodes, there's also some shorter episodes from Bosnia, Montenegro and Albania. I still have a soft spot for those back when we were just starting to see more of Eastern Europe for the first time. If you've been enjoying the music in the background, that's ours. We make all the music for these episodes and you can find it all, including the new Adriatic EP that goes with this series, on Bandcamp.com. If you want to support the channel, that's the place to do it. We're right on the cusp of a new series that we've been promising for, well, it's actually now years, multiple years now. So hit a subscribe for a lot, lot more of all of this. Following us on our socials will also be a massive boost, so huge thanks and catch you all very soon.